Hello everyone, this is Sanadeske and oh my god, today is the best day of my life. Demon Souls Remake. The moment I heard the trailer was up, I knew I'm definitely buying the PlayStation 5 because Demon Souls is the game that started it all out. It was the thing that kickstarted the Souls series, but sadly it was sort of neglected because of its exclusivity on the PlayStation 3 and it wasn't it, sadly not a lot of people got to play it, even diehard Souls fans. However, recently it got more attention because of the PlayStation 3 emulator with its 4K uh, resolution implementation at 60 frames per second, but still, the game has aged quite well since the game was released. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking about 5 things that I think should be changed in the Demon's Souls remake, and 5 things that should totally stay the same. So, just as a goal, let us try to aim for 2020 likes for this video, because with all that's happening this year, honestly, uh, this, this has made this year much better for me. So, without further ado, let us begin. So, number 10, something that should stay the same, is the general armor, weapons, and boss designs. Now, I wanted to talk firstly about this point, because in the trailer and in some of the screenshots that we have seen, we can see that the environment and the bosses have gotten a major, major overhaul in terms of uh, designs and things like that. However, that is something that I was kind of annoyed by, honestly, because uh, first of all, the fluted armor set, which is basically the, the armor set that's on the cover of Demon Souls, and it's basically the, the most, let's say, trademark armor for Demon Souls, and they changed the design of it. It, it, I, it. I don't like it. Honestly, I don't like it. <laughs> this is one change that I really don't like. I really like how they changed some of the environments and stuff, but honestly, this change I, I'm not really with. I'm, I'm super against because, it, like, there is also the nostalgia in the game, and this is something that's main to the game, you can say. So, changing it doesn't, kind of, doesn't really make sense, honestly. And we also saw the Flame Lurker boss, which also has changed his design, which sadly kind of looks like a normal demon enemy, you could say now. I, I don't know, I feel like it's from Doom Eternal for some reason, but the uh, thing is, uh, changing the designs of the bosses isn't really something that I think would be a positive change to the game, because first of all, like, the designs of the boss, you can, like, you can feel that From Software really do, like, you could say, have special designs for their bosses and their environments and all of that stuff, because changing these things kind of takes away from the soul of the game pun intended, of course. Now, uh, if you didn't know, the remake is actually being uh, made by uh, Bluepoint Games, which have made, worked before on the Metal Gear and uh, Uncharted, and most notably the Shadow of the Colossus remake, which was uh, which was a huge success, honestly. I, I loved the remake in terms of environments and stuff, but there were like some slight changes that took away from the soul of the game as well. But regardless, uh, I hope that they just understand and they don't change too much of the game, because we know there are things that need to be changed, but don't change too much, please. Number 9, something that should definitely be changed. Now this might be a little bit controversial to some people, but uh, it is the Scholar of the First Sin treatment, if I want to call it. Now if you didn't know, Dark Souls 2 was released, and later on, I think 2 or 3 years later, they released uh, Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin, uh, which was uh, on PlayStation 4, uh, on the next-gen consoles in general. And the, uh, they changed the enemy placements, they uh, changed enemy AIs, they added uh, some new enemies, they changed up some of the areas and spawns of the enemies, they changed some of the, uh, let's say, things that relate to the lore in terms of enemy placements, so they had, let's say, enemies, uh, hate knights placed in hate tower flame, for example, things like that, that really made the game much better, in my opinion. It changed the atmosphere of the game, it made it feel more polished, honestly. And to be honest, I think this is kind of needed in Demon's Souls, because uh, the story is... Uh, it has an amazing story, honestly. I really love the Demon's Souls story, and there are already elements and environment elements and stuff like that that you can say you can get hints from uh, to understand the lore. So I hope that they don't change these things, but anything that enhances these kind of stuff in terms of uh, uh, gameplay, uh, I think it it would be a very welcome addition because there are a bit of clunky stuff in the game. Uh, let's say some of the bosses, uh, some of their moves and stuff. I think they could be improved upon because some of them can be cheesed really easily. And I think like changing some of these stuff would be a very welcome change. And it's something that's gonna like make the game more modern and accessible for a lot of people. And uh, having the difficulty, you can say, scaled up to what we know of uh, the Soul series uh, today. Number 8, something that should stay the same, is the atmosphere of the game, which I mentioned in the previous one, but I want to focus specifically on specific areas, most notably the Tower of Latria. This area is basically a prison, and 
and it's dark and even when you go further with the level it's just darkness and you literally can't see in front of you which makes the atmosphere literally perfect for the area with all of the enemies and the sound and the sound effects and people screaming and knocking on doors and stuff like that it's, it's just a perfect atmosphere for that level so uh, Blue Point games, if you're watching this video, I hope you don't change this stuff. Like, so for example, in some games, let's say they lit up some areas for it to be more accessible to players and to see, which wasn't really good. It, it took away from like what the area is actually meant to be. So uh, I hope they uh, keep these things into consideration because also if we look at comparisons of uh, some of the areas, which are mostly the tutorial areas, and uh, thanks to Illusory Wall for uh, compiling these screenshots, uh, you can see that they changed the entirety of the environment like literally all of the buildings they changed their designs and stuff so i i, I love this honestly but uh, i hope that they don't change the atmosphere now i noticed that in the shrine of storms they actually there was a shot that they changed it to night so this is something that's really interesting now this might be linked to the war tendency mechanic in demon souls which is a very interesting mechanic so to speak maybe it can use a little bit of polishing uh, i'm sure but maybe if they link let's say black uh, war tendency having night areas this could be very very interesting because in Dark Souls 3 if you didn't know we were supposed to have uh, multiple you can say uh, skyboxes and multiple phases that or ceremonies as they're called you can get areas to night you can get them to different things like that Bloodborne had that thing where you as you progress the game uh, the, the basically the day moves on you get to night you get to dawn so this would be a very amazing change in Demon Souls if they actually decide to implement that and could really change up the atmosphere of the game in a very good way, especially in open areas. But Tower of Latria, I think it's it's safe to say that's gonna stay the same. Hopefully, I hope that. Next, something that should definitely be changed, which is the item burden mechanic. Now this might also be a controversial thing, but I don't know. For me personally, I think it's an unnecessary mechanic. Uh, it's because like. Uh, like when you're playing Souls game, you sometimes just want to change your armor, just want to change your weapon. So that's something that's really annoying in Demon's Souls. If you don't know what the item burden is, it's basically that you can carry a certain amount of items. And if you want, if you like reach that limit, you have to drop your items or you have to go to the hub area and give them to uh, Stockwell Thomas for him to store these uh, items for you so you can take other items instead of them. Now. Uh, I don't know. I, I I just think it's really unnecessary. Just like uh, as I said, like collecting items and changing them on the spot and stuff like that is really something that the Souls games have been really known for. And this mechanic hasn't even returned in any of the like rest of the Souls games. So uh, I think that I think it's something that they should remove. I don't think it's really needed nowadays. It, it does open up, let's say, possibilities for build limitations and stuff, which could be interesting for PvP. But in general, I think there's no need to keep it. I would like to see what you guys think about this, especially especially this part, because I think it's very debatable. So, if you'd like to discuss it in the comments, I would love to discuss it. Next is something that should stay the same, which is story and world building. Now, this is something that's really important, which is the lore of uh, the Soul series. As it's known for its complicated lore and that you have to read item descriptions, see environments, dialogues, uh, characters, bosses, and slight like small details to actually be able to piece up the story which was perfect for uh, with, with the like formula of the Dark Souls and Demon Souls has a very very interesting story. If you are interested in like the super in-depth analysis of Demon Souls story make sure to check out Loki's Twitter. Uh, he has a lot of posts that he analyzes the game uh, using localization and differences and stuff. He goes very in-depth with this stuff so the link to his Twitter will be in the description make sure you check him out. But something that I don't know if they will do uh, is let's say changing some of the descriptions now they have to fix some localization stuff and consistency stuff because there are some inconsistent stuff with the translation this could be fixed but I don't think if they add let's say new lore bits uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna be a good idea because retconning uh, retconning ideas isn't like always a good thing like we saw this with the soul series like in Dark Souls 3 where they kept let's say especially like in the last two DLCs they retconned some of the previous stuff so it just became a complicated mess so I think the story as it is it's perfect but let's say adding let's say slight small details in the environment you could say and adding stuff that enhance the current story without changing it uh, I think it's gonna be something uh, good, especially if it's stuff coming from Miyazaki himself, because from software are genius with this stuff. They put like slight details to give the story some meaning and stuff, so I think this would be a very good change. Now, next is something that should definitely be changed, which is the online multiplayer. Now, I'm not going to be talking about uh, the mechanics or anything, I just, the only thing I want to say is to try to implement some of the newer features that we saw in games like Dark Souls 3, like the password mechanic and stuff like that, just 
making an overhaul of the entire online uh, mechanics just something to keep into consideration because nowadays you can't play the online i think the servers even closed up for demon souls so that's a sad thing so uh, and a lot of people are going to be buying demon souls obviously the, the remake on the playstation 5 so i think having a good online system is a must for this game and i think that blue point games are going to be uh, taking that into consideration now the next thing, which is something that I really think that they should keep the same, is the mana bar. Now this is something that didn't make it into the next Souls games uh, until Dark Souls 3 returned it as the focus bar, which is basically uh, a separate bar that is consumed when you use magic. And I think this is something that's really good in Demon Souls. Magic was... Uh, they, it was a bit overpowered, honestly, in Demon Souls. It was like you can kill bosses like sometimes with one or two hits, <laughs> literally. But uh, regardless of that, uh, I think keeping the mana bar would really make, let's say, fights and PvP and generally using magic much more, you can say, uh, dependable than having it just like five or six uses and having to replenish it and stuff. I think having a bar would open up to more strategy and I think it's a very welcome, let's say, thing that they should keep and not remove. Uh, I think this this will mostly affect people in PvP, so uh, I would like to also hear what you guys think about something like this. Next is something that should definitely be changed, and I think everyone agrees with me in that, the North Hill Limit, the Land of the Giants, or generally the cut content of the game, because Demon Souls has so much cut content, and I have uploaded many videos about that, you can check them out, uh, I'll put the link to the playlist in the description. There are many enemies and NPCs, and basically an entire level, which is the North Hill Limit area, that has been completely removed from the game, but uh, the, the files of it still remain. So it's basically the broken archstone, which is the sixth archstone. So I, I don't know if they're going to be adding it or not, but honestly, if they add it with like, it's going to be a completely new level. That's the amazing thing is that we do, we've never really played that level with proper NPCs and proper enemies and proper bosses. So if they do add that, I think it's going to be an amazing and very, very, very welcome change into the game. Next is something that should stay the same, which is something really small, but it didn't uh, make it into the next games, which is the vaulting mechanic. It's a very small thing, honestly, but it allowed for more, let's say, traversal uh, capabilities in the game. It wasn't really utilized that well in the game, but I think I don't think removing it would like is necessarily a bad thing. But I think keeping it, it can. I don't know if they if they're gonna change some like small layout changes in the levels. So maybe if they're going to be keeping that, just make it more usable. You can say that, make it worth using. And finally, something that I think should definitely be changed is male and female exclusive armors. So in Demon Souls, you had specific armors that if you that are female exclusive. So if your character was a male, uh, you can take uh, that armor, but you can't wear it because it's female exclusive. Now this could be fixed with something like having uh, something a feature like Dark Souls 2, where you can switch your gender even after you have created your character, which could fix this problem, or maybe just making them unisex armors, I don't know. But, uh, I don't know, the, th the idea about unisex armors is that sometimes the armors look weird, because sometimes, like, that, let's say that outfit is, like, in terms of even the lore of the game, it's meant to be worn by females. So, for example, in Dark Souls 2, there was the armor of the Desert Sorceress, uh, which is basically, like, the idea of them, they are being female, so... Uh, when you wear it as a male, like, the, the complete design of the armor really changes, so, uh, like, it takes away from the idea, even, like, from the world of the game, so, uh, maybe, let's say, not limiting them, maybe, as I said, like, having an option to change your gender in the game would solve it, and would still keep consistent with the lore of the game itself, that this armor is meant to be worn by females or males, but in, in general, it just, it's just something that could be easily fixed in many ways, and I think, like, having a limitation, that kind of customizability isn't really needed, so I think that's a welcome change, uh, uh, like everyone I think would, would agree with me on that. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you all enjoyed. Tell me in the comments if you are excited for Demon Souls Remake, and tell me what other features that you think might be uh, implemented into the game, and just tell me what you, what you think about this, generally. I like, uh, I'm really excited for this, honestly, I've never been excited this, uh, this much before, especially since I left the channel like for quite some time now, but this is honestly like rekindling the hype for me. So yeah, again, thank you for watching, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you later. Bye-bye.